During the German attack on the island of Crete, I received orders to form a bodyguard from my platoon of New Zealanders to escort the King of Greece and his party across the mountains to the coast. We had no time to obtain supplies of food to carry with us, nor had the royal party time to find suitable footwear, and they gallantly undertook the journey over the mountains in ordinary walking shoes. In spite of these discomforts, together with the lack of sleep from which everybody suffered, every member of the party remained amazingly cheerful, particularly King George, whose anxiety was always apparent for the comfort of the men. They have all expressed their admiration for his thoughtfulness and courage. We were continually forced to take cover from air attacks, but after a journey of three days and three nights, during which we crossed the snow line and drank melted ice, we came out onto the coast from where we were eventually embarked in a naval unit and arrived safely at a Middle East port. Lieutenant Ryan's platoon have had a rest and a brush up since then. They look none the worse for their experience as they swing down an eastern street to be thanked by the king who shared their adventure and their hardships. Palaces or mountain caves, they're all the same to these boys. They know now that they can tackle a man-sized job and bring it off. Prince George, uncle to the King of Greece, enters into a lively discussion with Lieutenant Ryan while the reception is in progress. And then the King himself gives a hand to the New Zealand lads who brought him safely out of his war-torn country to continue the fight against the Nazi hordes. A fight that will continue until Greece and all the rest of the world is free again. New Zealanders, Maori and European alike, have faced tremendous odds with great courage. They were almost entirely without air support, yet they met and held an air attack of unprecedented extent and violence until they were literally blasted out of their positions. They hurled back and decimated the Nazi parachute troops without food for days, and in some cases even without water, Many of them suffering from wounds and sickness, they retired in orderly fashion to the beaches from which they were evacuated by the never failing Navy. Their courage, their endurance, their repeated proofs of an unconquerable spirit, their sufferings, their sacrifices will not be in vain. New Zealand is wholeheartedly in the fight for liberty alongside the motherland with the other countries of the British Commonwealth and our allies. New Zealand has dedicated the whole of her resources to the struggle for the freedom of mankind and will continue to do our utmost until Nazi and fascist tyranny is finally and completely defeated. These are the new veterans with the swagger and assurance of soldiers who've been put to the test and know just how good they are. As good soldiers, they eat when they can, and the counter lunch provided by willing workers at the ship's side is accepted with obvious appreciation. These are the men who cannot be beaten, and their spirits are high in spite of their grueling experience. The battles of Greece and Crete will be remembered always by the young men who fought there so gallantly, remembered for the simple homely thing, and for hardships that were made light of in such a fury of attack as no man has faced before. Some brought back grim reminders with them. Just half an inch from eternity, this one. But they had other trophies, too. These men fought for that liberty and freedom without which life is not worth living. They fought for the right of all people to live their own lives freely and well. And when they returned from Crete, the identification parade showed many gaps in the ranks. The boys who did not come back. But whatever the cost, the job must go on. The veterans of Greece and Crete move off to a transit camp to rest and refit. They know at first hand what they're up against now, and they know that given the weapons, nothing can hold them back. They're tired but happy. They are sustained by the knowledge that no troops have ever done better. And it won't be long now till they're on top of their form again. 
these civilian soldiers from way down under who showed the world that no weight of weapons could break the spirit of men nurtured in freedom. Out at the camp, the men quickly settle in and find more comfort than they've had in recent weeks. Even if the plumbing is rather primitive, it serves its purpose. Then, fresh and rested, the Maoris perform a defiant haka that symbolizes the spirit of all the New Zealand troops. These are the men who fought in Greece and Crete. We cannot yet give them our thanks in person, but the Prime Minister of New Zealand pays tribute to them on our behalf. Our magnificent young men who have returned, as Mr. Fraser says, after deeds of courage, valour and daring that have never been surpassed. With the Prime Minister is General Freiburg, who stands proudly as leader of a gallant army that has proved itself in the greatest test of all. To the men, Mr. Fraser tells some of the thoughts that are in the hearts of all of us at home. Our pride in their achievement, our sorrow at their losses, our gratitude for their courage and their sacrifices, our promise of the utmost support to men who deserve so much. In the Mardi grounds, parade formalities are forgotten while the men take the opportunity to meet and talk with their general. It's a great moment for the boys and a great moment for the general too when he shakes hands with the new veteran. Soldier meets soldier on the even footing of men who know that each has done his share in a worthwhile job and done it well. Then, while General Freiburg chats with General Puttick, now Chief of the New Zealand General Staff, the men relax. Just ordinary, decent, easy-going chaps, they seem. The men we know, our friends, our brothers. But we know, too, that they have in them a hatred of brutality and oppression, a surging spirit of freedom that will smash dictatorship forever and set us all free to remake the world. Mm -hmm.